Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Or if it's your first time here, which it probably is because I have four subscribers, uh, welcome. I'm Renee. Uh, stick around if you want to hear me talk about my makeup palette obsession. Uh, so today's video I thought would be fun. I saw the palette tag going around. I saw a bunch of YouTube videos on it. Uh, I personally, the first one I saw was Kelly Gooch's and it looked like fun. I saw it on Reddit too, where somebody had posted all of the questions and was asking people to respond. And if you don't know what this tag is, it's basically like 12 categories of palette, like newest, oldest, most expensive, and it, you know, it goes down the list. And I tell you which palette of mine fits that description. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I have too many eyeshadow palettes for one person and I thought this would be a fun Sunday afternoon activity for some reason. So let's get started. The first category is for your newest palette. And for me, that's the Nabla Soul Blooming Eyeshadow Palette, uh, which is in fact cruelty free and vegan. The whole brand is vegan, except for products that contain beeswax, which is noted on their website. So I guess the whole brand isn't vegan, but the way that they phrase it on their website makes it sound like they want to be or like would be it without the beeswax they do know which products aren't vegan on their website and this palette does not contain beeswax it's a really pretty eyeshadow palette i love the color story of this my boyfriend actually picks it up for me in italy i had been wanting it for a while uh he's italian and when he was coming back to the states i was like I completely forgot that Nabla is an Italian brand <laughs> and I had been really wanting this eyeshadow palette so I was lucky enough to have him bring it back to the States for me and now it's the newest eyeshadow palette in my collection and I love it. It's great quality. I would highly recommend this palette especially if you like playing with like these kind of like fantasy colors I'll call it like the pinks and purples and yeah, it's not so much of like an everyday palette for me, but I love every look I get out of it. So, would recommend. The second category is the oldest palette. And this is bad because this one is really old, but I have kind of like a theory that powders don't <laughs> expire and I know it's wrong. Don't come for me. I know that I'm, I'm wrong about that and I'm lying to you, but it hasn't changed like texture or formula and I haven't gotten an eye infection so I know that that's not like the highest standards of like keeping your makeup but here we are it's my original naked palette and actually this was not the first naked palette I bought I had the naked two first it was my only palette that I owned at the time and I used it like completely up like the gold shade in it and like the brown shade that was what I did on my lids every day gold and then brown on the outside and I used it up and I actually threw that one out like kind of recently, which is bad because I think I bought it in like 2013, but I wasn't getting use out of it because I don't really go for like the cooler tones in the palette and I'd used up the warmer ones. Um, and then this one obviously is the first one. So when I used up the pat tones in the second palette, I went to Sephora and I was like, ooh, I want the warm version of it because I loved the formula of the Naked 2 so much. And for whatever reason, I did not love the formula of this one. And I know it's a cult classic and I know it's been around forever and I really think I got this in like 2013. And people like loved it for good reason because it was like the first of its kind. Like there was not like huge eyeshadow palettes like this when I was first getting into makeup. Uh, and especially like of neutral tones. So for good reason, I know why this was so popular. But now I just feel like formulas have gotten so much better and this color story is repeated several times. So I give it like a C plus, maybe a B minus. It's not bad. There's nothing like horrendous about it. It's nice colors. Just also nothing special about it anymore <laughs> because it's 2020 and I've owned it for too long. Uh, and it is cruelty free, Urban Decay is, but it's not vegan. And it's actually on like their frequently asked questions. Like I guess people really think this palette is vegan and it's not. So. Yeah, I'm, I'll go C plus. I'll, I'll be brutal on this one, C plus. Now for most expensive is the next category. And this one came down, I actually had to look because I have two palettes that I thought it could be. Either the Pat McGrath Mothership 5 or the Natasha Denona, <laughs> Natasha Denona Biba palette. And it's this by $4. The Pat McGrath that's under 25 and this Natasha Denona, 129. So, this is way too much money, but it is a fantastic palette. It is cruelty free, and Natasha Denona is cruelty free, but the palette is not vegan. It contains carmine and some of the shades. 
which is crushed up beetles, so not vegan. Um, I, I hesitate to say that this is worth the price because I don't think any colorful dust can be worth $129. You can see how much I've used it and it's perfect. It's like the perfect everyday palette for me. It's got like all these gold tones that I love wearing, warm colors. It's even got some cool colors down here that I don't use, but I love this black to deepen up shades as well. And I love it. Like I would purchase it again if it was vegan, if this got stolen from me today for whatever reason, like, but it's so hard to say it's worth $129 because no eyeshadow is actually worth $129. So <sighs> draw your line where you want. I would rate this a 10 out of 10, A plus, but I might have to deduct like 0.1 for it being absurdly expensive. And then on the exact other side of the spectrum, we have my most affordable palette, which is $4 from Walgreens. And this is actually no, from CVS. Excuse me. I bought this when I lived above a CVS in Nashville because I would walk through the CVS every day on my way to my apartment because the elevators were like inside the CVS and could not stop myself <laughs> from picking up a lot of wet and wild products because they were always on sale because CVS is like those extra extra bucks extra something uh, that print out of the little machine and come out of your receipt and so I'd get them like for free so what was I supposed to do anyway it was four dollars uh it now they've updated it it's in like a completely different packaging and for a while this was like a cult favorite on especially reddit people recommended this all the time um and i you can see this is also old because i had it in college and i never really used it that much um it's like fine i'd give this one like maybe a c minus like i didn't think the shades were that special i didn't think they blended that well i didn't think that they were so dimensional and like life-changing i mean it's like four dollars sure but like there's a lot of things i could spend four dollars on and i haven't used this and also it's at the time when i purchased it it was cruelty free now that wet and wild is selling in china again and their products can be pulled at any time to be tested on animals it's no longer cruelty free and it's also not vegan so should i even still have this in my collection no am i going to be too lazy and think about decluttering it but probably not for a little while yes all right the next category is everyday palette and for me that's the anastasia beverly hills modern renaissance uh it's cruelty free not vegan i this is my second one of these palettes because i like used up all the shades in the first palette specifically like this gold and the oranges like this part of the palette right here plus like right here is just it's my everyday colors it's what i wear every day like <laughs> i literally love this palette like i can't get enough of it but it's not vegan so um i guess when i use this up i'll have to find a replacement skipping ahead it's my palette for the palette that's worth the hype because this was like so obviously very hyped up when it came out it was sold out everywhere and people loved it and everybody owned it and i think for good reason i think that the shades blend really well it's easy to wear every day and it's easy to incorporate like some more color and it kind of like normalized these berry tones as being somewhat neutral so i do think it's it's definitely worth the hype it started a whole trend of warm toned palettes with berry tones thrown in um which i love that trend <laughs> i will continue to do that trend because it's what looks good on me but i do think it's worth the hype and i would give this palette an a because uh it's not vegan and i guess i gave the natasha denona an a plus still if you don't care about it being vegan it's an a plus if you do i guess it's a moot point but since i used that modern renaissance palette later too i was like it feels kind of cheaty to just like copy and paste. So I also pulled out like what I think of as like the quintessential everyday palette in my collection because it's like completely neutral and like kind of natural. And the name of it is even Too Faced Naturalized. And <laughs> it is cruelty free. It's not vegan. But I just feel like it's the like quintessential everyday palette. Like golds, pinks, browns. And it's like small. It's perfect for traveling. That's actually why I bought it. I was backpacking in Peru and I was like... I need a little palette to fit in my backpack and it comes in like well I think now actually they changed the packaging but at the time it came in this cute little metal tin so it's pretty protected but I still destroyed it so I don't know if you can see but it's like <laughs> indented uh, kind of badly but regardless uh it's a really nice palette um it's great for every day I actually recommend it but I not that much because it's kind of boring so I'd say maybe like a b plus 
Great for traveling if you need something small and sturdy. For most colorful, I'm kind of boring. I don't have a ton of colorful eyeshadows, which I'm trying to change. I'm trying to branch out and get more colorful palettes. But the one that I do have that I think is the most colorful currently is this BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette, which I believe was limited edition and they don't sell anymore because I could only find it on sale at Kohl's for $9 and not on the BH Cosmetics website. It is cruelty free and from my inspection, it looks vegan. BH Cosmetics isn't a vegan brand, but I checked the ingredients and I didn't see any beeswax, carmine, any of the like usual suspects. So I think it's vegan, but it's also hard to tell because I took it off the website and there's no like ingredients on the back here because I threw away the little plastic sleeve. But it is like a really fun palette if you want like fun colors. Like obviously on this side, they're still kind of boring, but definitely got a lot of fun shades so i like it uh, i don't use it very often because i'm not creative and i'm really boring so i would give it a b the next palette was the smallest palette and i don't know if this counts because it's also like a quad and it's i think a sample size like i don't think the brand actually makes palettes this small it came in a beauty box that i get but it's the Oriza Beauty <laughs> Nude Shimmer and Contour Eyeshadow. And look how cute and small it is. Like, I don't know if this counts, but it's really small. <laughs> so I really like it. Um, it is a cruelty-free brand. They're like pretty adamant on their website. Like nothing is ever tested on animals ever. We love animals. And then they didn't have a section though on if they were vegan, which I thought was interesting when they were so like, we love animals. And then I looked at the ingredients though and I didn't see anything that, looked not vegan so potentially vegan check the ingredients for yourself if you want it i think it's really cute the shades are actually pretty good quality i've worn it before and i really liked the like kind of really bronzy look it probably would have been nice today i mean i don't use it that much it's just definitely the smallest palette in my collection so that's all i have to say about it <laughs> largest palette in my collection is for sure this is the palette that doesn't like fit in my drawer i have it like laying down underneath like other things this is my Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. And this is like the OG one that doesn't have the shades or the mirror. And at the time when I bought this, it was vegan. But I guess I changed the ingredients and had like kind of a scandal about it and didn't tell anyone that now it's not vegan. And I think they were still marketing it as vegan, uh, but it's not anymore. And, but Morphe is cruelty free. So it's cruelty free, no longer vegan if you wanted to purchase it but this one is vegan and obviously it's like a super beloved palette like so many people who are into makeup or not into makeup own this palette i really like it my one gripe and i know this is stupid because i have golds in every single palette in my collection but there's no like light gold like the modern renaissance has that I can use to like make a warm look with while all the browns are really warm. And then this like random quad of color, like did we need these two shades? I don't know. And there's like a lot, like these all could be one color I wouldn't notice, but I do like it. I'll give it an A minus. I'll bump it down to a B plus for the like vegan scandal thing. But I mean, it's a really nice palette and I do use it a lot and I enjoy this is what I really like it for. If I'm like, oh, I need an extra medium toned brown and I don't know like which palette to pull out for it, 100% this will have whatever browns I need. It is a good palette. I will give it that. All right, the next category is the one that you have the best memory of or like a, a really good memory associated with. And this was difficult because I feel like I definitely have not memories wearing whichever eyeshadow palette, but more so like associated with how I acquired it. So the Nobles Soul Blooming palette that I talked about earlier as my newest palette, I would also agree as the best memory with it because my boyfriend was kind enough to track it down for me in Italy and bring it back for me. You know, the first time I was using it, he was sitting here with me and helping me pick out shades to go on my eyes and it was really sweet and that's just a really nice memory but I've already used that palette and it kind of felt like cheating to use it again so I also picked out my uh, Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette because I had just started my new job and it was my birthday and I had just moved to a new state and I was pretty stressed and down and my sister ordered this for me for my birthday without even knowing how interested I was in it and it's like beautiful tones and I it was such a welcome surprise in the mail and I really enjoyed it uh so this will be my best memory from that period and I remember walking out onto my porch of my bedroom and swatching all these shades in the sun I should see if I can still find that picture I'll 
put it somewhere on the screen if I can. And just being really excited about it. And I honestly don't use it as much as I should because it, I do think it's more of a fall palette. So I'm gonna make an effort to use it this fall. Huda is cruelty free and the palette is not vegan. Uh, it does contain carmine. So. I would give this palette like an eight, but it's a really nice palette and it has a really great memory attached to it. So. I like it. All right, I already mentioned how Modern Renaissance was the palette that's worth the hype for sure. And then the next category then would be the palette that's not worth the hype. And uh, this is probably controversial, but here we go. Uh, the Pat McGrath Mothership 5. This is like the most neutrally toned of her palettes. And I think that's probably why I don't think it's worth the hype. Like I own these shades so many times in my collection that they'd have to be perform like egregiously well for them to be worth $125 and the amount of hype surrounding these palettes because it is really expensive and like at the time that I purchased this it was sold out everywhere I was so excited to get it and I, I do think that though the product is beautiful like the shimmers are beautiful but it's so difficult to work with this palette alone I, I don't know I don't know what it's truly lacking the shimmers are beautiful they swatch beautifully they go in the eye beautifully they do light up your eye i just don't find it to be easy to build a full look i always when i have to use when i use this palette i have to use other palettes which is fine it's just like i don't want to pay 125 dollars to have to use other eyeshadow palettes on top of this one you know what i mean so for that reason it's not worth the hype not because the quality is bad or there's issues with it it's just for its price, having to reach into other eyeshadow palettes is annoying. And Pat McGrath is not cruelty free and it's not vegan. Next is the favorite palette from your favorite brand. I don't actually own eyeshadow from like the brands that I would consider my favorite brands, which are more at the current moment like Ilia or Tarte, and I don't like Tarte's eyeshadows, Glossier, like I typically go for like a cream, Fenty probably but I would typically go for like a cream look, a more natural look, but I still like doing a heavier eyeshadow. So the brand that I think makes my favorite eyeshadow formula is Anastasia Beverly Hills. And my favorite palette from the brand is not Modern Renaissance, it's the Master Palette by Mario. And this, if, <laughs> this was limited edition and it's sold out everywhere. And obviously, because I think it came out in like 2016. But if ABH could bring this back, they might just become my favorite brand for that reason alone. Like this palette is, I know like when you look at it, it doesn't look like anything, but when you swash the shades, they're so beautiful. The looks are so cohesive, so summery, so folly, so warm, so beautiful. I love this palette. I saw like the swatches for this on the brand's Instagram whenever it was about to launch and I like gasped. Like I fell in love. I was like, I need that palette. I had an alarm set. I was ready and oh man, I love it. I know a lot of people. I know I'm not the only one with that sentiment because some people don't even get their hands on it, but it is my favorite palette from my favorite eyeshadow brand. Uh, cruelty free, not vegan. And then my most used, I know this is a cop out, but it's the only palette that I've purchased twice in my life. And I do feel like it is my most used palette. I feel like I do use it when I don't know what else to use. Um, so the Anastasia Modern Renaissance, which I've already talked in depth about, but uh, it's definitely my, my most used palette. Um, considering that this is my second palette of it and I'm already about to hit pan again. I think that that just goes to show how much I do use this palette and like it. So this is um, my most used. But anyway, that was the whole tag. That's the all the palettes that answer those 12 questions. And again, it's not all the palettes in my collection. And I want to do a video ranking every palette in my collection, um, which I think would be really difficult to rank, but could be kind of interesting to see where they fall. I'll leave all the palettes I mentioned and the questions in the description below so that if you want to do this tag too you have like an easy reference um to find the list but thank you for watching I really appreciate it uh and I will see you guys in the next one bye